if you survive part one and you've come back for part two, well, you're either a sucker for punishment or I'm more interesting than I ever thought. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go through the audit findings, but I'm not going to go through all of them. There's 27 things listed in the audit, and of those, a whole bunch of them relate to issues at side streets, and I'm just going to lump all of them into one, and I might do that as part three. Uh, instead, what we're going to do is just look at these issues, which are everything to do with something that's not a side street intersection issue. At the start of the audit, there's a couple of things to note. Uh, the auditors did inspections by day and by night, which is good, exactly how it's supposed to be done. And they uh, drove and walked beside the audited road section. But unfortunately, as we saw in part one, they uh, didn't do what the guide suggests, which is to hop on a bike and ride it. Uh, I do have some video footage later on, um, which does show riding through uh, parts of the cycleway. Uh, so we'll just have to look at that instead. The auditors also note up front that the positive attributes of this have not been discussed and obviously that's out of scope. Uh, or also too difficult to audit now that the cycleway is in place I mean, you can't really audit what was there before. That's very unfortunate. Uh, this is where doing a, a safety audit in the design phase would have been good. Would have helped to highlight all the issues that existed on the road uh, before the cycleway was put in. Now issue number one relates to two lanes uh, merging into one as you approach the uh, tunnel that goes under the railway bridge and in particular being a left hand turn after one of the lanes pinches out and a right hand turn so yeah this is actually raised in the, uh, the uh, Austroids uh, road safety audit guide as being a real issue now the question I guess is how much does the imposition of the cycleway exacerbate that because it's been like this for god knows how many years you know decades um, and all the cycleway has done is possibly push the merge point back a little bit. So, you know, is it any more risky than it was six months ago? Um, certainly, look, one thing I noticed coming through here was the speed of drivers approaching this corner with or without cyclists. And, uh, you know, I think a lot more, a lot of it comes down to just drivers thinking, you know, that Peter Brock on Conrad Strait and, uh, you know, they're going around the chicanes and they want to go around as fast as they can and that's where they get into trouble. Uh, as usual, you know, people uh, not speeding, but not driving to the conditions, driving too fast for the conditions uh, is potentially more of an issue here. Now there is a solution for this and uh, for cyclists and it's fairly straightforward. That is, if you're approaching this um, on, a, on, the cycle, on the road rather than on the shared path, just take the lane. You know, it's all you need to do is maybe 50 metres before the intersection, don't hug the gutter, move out, take the lane and force drivers to wait behind you, just like we're doing here. If you do it this way, you know, there's just no way you're going to get hit from behind um, because, you know, uh, there'll be no chance for drivers to actually do something silly like that. Issue number two looks at whether this is a shared path or not. And frankly, uh, having had a look, I don't know, and I'll leave it up to the city, city of Sydney to work it out. Um, yeah, let's just say uh, I'm confused as well. Look, there are symbols further back down the path uh, towards the fish markets, there's signs on poles, etc. But they cut out around the pub and it's not clear where, where the shared path actually ends. Issue number two then goes on to talk about the risk of collisions between pedestrians and cyclists in this tunnel or emerging from this tunnel. And yes, I think that's uh, quite possible. Uh, while I was standing there uh, you know, taking some video footage, this bloke walked out of the tunnel and he was walking on the right hand side of the tunnel or my left. So if I'd been riding into the tunnel, um, you know, I might have actually run into him because he was you know, on the wrong side of the path for Australia. That said though, uh, when you look at the video, it looks like it's really dark and he emerges out of the corner, but that's because I'm standing on the footpath. If I'd actually come off the road on the ramp, there's actually a, a really clear view through the tunnel and you can see you know, during the day if there's anyone in there because you can see them silhouetted against the light on the other side. Um, so, you know, if you're paying attention, you're not going to run into someone. Um, the other thing to, just to bear in mind about this is people might go, oh my God, this is a, a you know, intolerable risk rating, etc. The thing to remember is there are tunnels like this all over Sydney uh, and some of them are a hell of a lot narrower. And cyclists have been dealing with these for the last couple of decades simply by slowing down or ringing the bell when they get near them. Uh, you know, there's blind corners under bridges, there's blind corners where uh, they've put in sound barriers. 
uh, there's blind corners caused by bushes, etc. You just, you just ring your bell. And that is exactly what I suggest cyclists do as they approach uh, this tunnel, is just ring your bell and let people know you're coming. There was one hazard that the auditors missed that the Sydney City Council's uh, since picked up, and that's next to this little uh, concrete ramp underneath the bridge. There was this bare patch that was left by the concreters, and they left some formwork behind, a bit of wood, uh, it was jutting up and it could grab your wheel as you came over it. They've since patched it, but you know I think because the auditors walked and drove through, they didn't pick that up. But that's an obvious place for cyclists to ride over, and uh, and this just stresses the importance of actually cycling the route if you're studying a cycleway. And that's why it's stated uh, in the 2019 guide that that's what you have to do. Now, issue number three is a really interesting one because it deals with a potential conflict between pedestrians coming down the stairs off the tram stop uh, on top of the bridge and cyclists coming through this tunnel. And yeah, they rightly point out that, uh, you know, the stairs are after a, a bit of a blind bend around here and a cyclist coming through could smack into someone coming down the stairs. And uh, look, I have to admit, I didn't even notice the stairs were there until I read this report because they're really well hidden behind a brick wall and then lots of vegetation's grown up and uh, you just don't see them. I actually had to ride through to a U-turn, come back and have a close look to see that they were there. Now, look, one potential solution to this is that, um, you paint a green lane. Now, this is going to sound probably non-obvious, but uh, you paint a green lane on the right-hand side of the tunnel as you're coming off the, uh, the road. And what that does is it leads cyclists to um, go up the ramp onto the path, stick to the right-hand side of the tunnel, and then they're straight onto the path on the other side. And that would de-conflict um, with pedestrians walking on the other side. The only problem I can really see with that is, you know, cyclists are generally pretty good at sticking to a lane uh, if it's marked green and it's marked for cyclists. And, uh, you know, places like the Bay Run, cyclists are quite used to riding on the left, riding on the right, riding all over the place. You know, we simply go where the symbols tell us to go. It's a completely different matter for pedestrians. You know, there's about 5% that pay absolutely no attention to their surroundings or, you know, where they should be walking. And, uh, you know, that's where you'll end up with, with an almighty conflict that, uh, you know, this may well work for 95% of the population, but what about the 5% that are focused on their phones and, you know, not walking, what, not watching where they're walking, and they'll simply walk down the cycle lane without thinking. Look, it's, it's worth bearing in mind, but, uh, you know, that might be a solution, but uh, I don't think there's any solution to dealing with human nature. Now, I'm not going to cover all the individual intersection risks because it's a whole bunch of them, and most of them are located between the, uh, the railway bridge and Glee Point Road. And you can see on this map I've marked them up. And I think it would have been really useful if a report, this had been included in the report, uh, so you could actually see where all the risks are located. Now, one thing to bear in mind is if you'd come through and done a road safety audit six months before, you would have all these dots on the map like this, and actually the entire road, um, particularly going uphill, would just be one continuous risk because it used to be absolutely awful riding along Bridge Road from the fish markets and being in the traffic lane and having to go underneath the railway bridge where you've got uh, cars merging, it's a left-hand bend. Uh, as it's report, pointed out in the report, there's you know poor visibility. The, uh, the probability of being hit by a driver um, under there was really, really high. So obviously it's been dealt with by uh, moving cyclists onto the path, which is the principle of separation. Um, and then riding up the hill where you've got fast moving traffic and slow moving cyclists, the speed differential in itself creates a, an enormous hazard and that's been removed again through separation. So, you know, just bear in mind that, uh, but, you know, don't lose your minds over uh, saying, oh my goodness, there's lots of risks along here. It used to just be one continuous risk. So when I look at it, I think, yeah, there's still problems, but uh, those problems are five, probably 5% 5 of what they were six months ago. So uh, yeah, it's not perfect, but uh, it's a heck of a lot better than what we had to deal with uh, previously. The other thing that an audit six months ago would have picked up would be the hazards presented by cars parked along the side of Bridge Road. Uh, you know, it's noted in the uh, Austroads guide that parked cars present all sorts of issues, including uh, you know, risk of dooring cyclists, which is an ever-present risk all over the place for us, and also uh, you know, drivers pulling out without looking or indicating, which happens a disturbing amount of the time. Uh, so again, every, if you looked at this map previously, uh, every single section with red 
but with parked cars should have been marked up as red and all those risks have now been removed. I mean, that's one of the positive aspects of the cycleway. You know, if, anywhere there's parked cars and you're pulling out of a side street in a car, you, unless you're in a van, you've really got to stick your nose out in order to see what's coming from your right. And uh, you know, that's a real problem. <clears throat> it's not just a problem for cyclists, it's a problem for drivers as well. So, you know, I would have thought, uh, you know, a positive impact of the cycleway is it's not only made it much safer for uh, cyclists, but also for drivers. I'd be interested to see uh, if, if there's any change in the crash data over the next, uh, say, one to three years on these side streets, um, not between cyclists and vehicles, but between vehicles and vehicles. Now, it's not the job of the auditors to suggest how to actually fix these problems at intersections, but I would have thought you know, an obvious way to do it would be actually to repeat what's actually on some of the side streets along Bridge Road at the moment, and that's to put in uh, continuous footpaths or Wombat crossings or raised uh, pedestrian crossings, whatever you want to call them, a nice big concrete island across the uh, opening of the road uh, to force drivers to slow down or even stop, give way to pedestrians on the footpath. I mean, it's a high pedestrian area anyway. It's nice, uh, densely populated in the city. Pedestrians should have priority over everybody else. And, uh, you know, that stops drivers uh, much more effectively than sticking a stop sign at the end of these roads. You know, they're probably not going to um, stop for that, but they will stop for a couple of tonnes of concrete. I don't want to make this part too long, so I'm going to finish it here. There'll be another part covering the remaining issues raised in the report. If you're interested, you can go back and have a look at part one, which is kind of like a primer on the Austroads Guide to Doing Road Safety Audits.